such a beautiful, yeah, okay, I bet it is. There's, yeah. And this new carpet just pick, just picks up that lace carpet. Morning. Good morning. Welcome to Northside. It's great to see everyone today. I'm Pastor Tony Harder. Welcome to our uh, folks and friends who are watching us on Facebook Live this morning or later in the week on YouTube. It's good to see you. A couple of announcements before we begin our worship service today. And uh, today we will take a little time to uh, to bless our have a back back to school blessing for uh, our students and teachers a uh, couple of announcements though before we start um, the church council is meeting today at four and uh, Carol and I talked and I think we'll do that in the uh, fellowship hall uh, Larry since we got all that stuff in the uh, chapel so we'll meet in the fellowship hall at four so Larry could uh, maybe get the air conditioning turned on for us down there that'd be great I got a note from uh, uh, Bill Fabian, and it looks like they had a great crowd of volunteers to pack a bunch of backpacks for uh, for the first part of school. And he wanted to thank uh, Carol and Lorraine and Becky and Kevin and John and Stephanie and Gavin came and Larry and Olin, and he said they packed 160 bags. So, how long does that get us, by the way? How long does that? Eight weeks, okay. So thanks to everyone who, uh, who came and helped with that. And uh, be listening after about eight weeks. We'll do it again, right? So, um, oh, and uh, don't forget the uh, little envelope there in the back of the pew uh, to, if you'd like to make a donation to help support the uh, backpack ministry. So 
Tony. Yes. I think we need to thank Bill because he's the one that gets everything together for us to do that. Well, yeah, I mean, uh, Bill is uh, so gracious to, uh, he takes that on as a ministry, so uh, he's thanking a lot of people, but Bill, we give, a, you know, we're thankful that, uh, thanks to you for uh, pulling that all together. It takes someone with a heart to just organize it all. So you do a lot behind the scenes. I'm sorry, say it again. <laughs> Okay, so Gavin, yeah, Gavin, Gavin enjoys that sort of thing too. So thanks to Gavin for uh, for helping uh, helping Bill. Um, you'll note in the bulletin uh, we've uh, uh, announced that uh, Hulda McDonald uh, Hulda passed away uh, Wednesday morning, very early, and uh, her uh, memorial service will be next Sunday, the 18th. The service will be at four. We're still working out details about visitation, you know, before or after, but the service will be at four uh, here next week. So uh, be in prayer for her family. Um, tomorrow night at five is our uh, next focus meeting. We've rescheduled that from last week. So five o'clock tomorrow uh, is our next focus meeting. Um, Stephanie and I had a great time uh, serving lemonade to people last week so uh, if you'd like to join us to uh, help with that that'll be uh, we get here about 4 30 on Wednesdays and serve from 5 to 6 so <clears throat> excuse me anything else we need to announce before worship okay well we're grateful that you're here and uh, and uh, we have uh, a lot going on to you know, uh, at Northside right now and uh, in the future. So, <coughs> excuse me, we're, we're grateful for that. Let us, uh, let us now focus on our worship today as we uh, set that business aside. Let us uh, begin with a word of prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God and Father, uh, we have come, uh, your people, to worship. Lord, so, so much goes on in the life of the church, and we thank you, Father, for giving us uh, the, the strength, the energy to, to do the work of Christ. We thank you for uh, the hands and feet of, of those who help and serve. Today, Lord, we seek and want to give you our hearts as we worship, to give you our voice, to give you our prayers. Um, just our very presence is here today, seeking to honor Jesus and glorify our Lord and Savior. Be with us, Holy Spirit and uh, enable us and empower our worship today. Through Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Our first uh, song today is, is Praise the Lord. It's an insert in your bulletin. Would you please stand? <clears throat> and I'd like to read Psalm 150 for you just to remind you of what Scripture says before we sing this modern worship setting. And remember that after the service, we also end our services with Around the Corner, Around the World for Now, and I would love for you to sing that each week instead of just using it as exit music so that you're aware of the mission that we have of God each week in the world as we leave the sanctuary. Psalm 150, praise the Lord, praise God in his sanctuary, praise him in the heavens of his power, praise him for his mighty acts, Praise him according to the abundance of his greatness. Praise him with trumpet sound. Praise him with lute and harp. Praise him with tambourine and dance. Praise him with stringed and wind instruments or flutes. Praise him with resounding cymbals. Praise him with loud clashing cymbals. Let everything that has breath and every breath of life Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Alleluia. And Alleluia, we learned this week in choir, is derived from the very name of Jehovah himself, Yahweh. Alleluia. So you're singing praise to God when you say Alleluia.
indeed be to God. Let us join now in that spirit of praise and recite the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning, we'll be doing a Psalter responsive reading, and it's found on page 821 in your red hymnal, page 821. Please read responsively. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the land. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into God's presence with singing. Know that the Lord who made us is God. We are the Lord's. We are the people of God, the sheep of God's pasture. Enter God's gate with thanksgiving and God's courts with praise. Give thanks and bless God's name. For the Lord is good. God's steadfast love endures forever. God's faithfulness to all generations. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So we want to invite at this time all of our all students and we have teachers to come down and we're going to have a little blessing for the new school year. So, so we didn't we didn't do this before school. School actually started to uh, Thursday. So, uh, but I don't I don't think we're really late. Did y'all have a busy first couple of days? Yeah, okay. And Kaylee doesn't go back to school until October? Yeah, okay. And same for you, right? Okay. And what about this young man? You in school? Okay, awesome. Okay. Well, we're uh, grateful. I've got some little, we always have uh, some things you can put on a book bag. So I've got, this year's our theme is, uh, I'm sorry, is Guardian Angels. So we've got all kinds of little things you can put on a book bag or a pocketbook or just carry in your pocket, whatever. So you can, uh, after we're done, uh, pick those up and, uh, and take them. And you can take two or three of them if you want, okay? <coughs> and I still have some crosses left over from last year if you want one of those. And if anybody else wants one, there's plenty enough. So anyway, I, we pray that, uh, that all of you have a great uh, school year and uh, we've got all of these students and we've got Katie who teaches and Jessica who is uh, kind of an administrator for special needs and Kim who teaches in a middle school and uh, special needs as well. And so we're blessed uh, to, that 
that education is a big part of the people in our church, and uh, so we want them to have a great year. So let us, uh, let us all join together in prayer. Let us pray. Gracious and eternal God, at the start of a school year, we give thanks for the many ways you are a loving teacher to us all. Your love reminds us that we are all your children and students under your tutelage. You guide us toward a life of wholeness and decency. Instruct us, Father, with the principles of holy living and correct our missteps with grace and forgiveness. We're grateful for the lessons you teach us, which in turn guide these children who learn from our examples. We pray, Lord, for our schools and for all of our teachers who have the noble task of educating the most impressionable among us. Grant all of these patience in the classroom, wisdom in their counsel, and endurance for the year ahead. May they receive from their community the affirmation they richly deserve but rarely receive. Lord, we pray for school administrators and staff. Lead them through the challenges of funding and staffing. We pray for the current election of those who would serve on our school board. Guide all of these leaders in providing courage, wisdom, and resources that our schools need. We pray for families in our community. We call them to a deeper level of involvement in the education of their children in support of their schools. Please, Lord, help parents find a balance between busyness and family time. We pray for those who might be facing some financial hardship during unsteady economic times, and especially those experiencing poverty. Lord, please guide Northside in ministering to all of these. See that our school campuses are secure and healthy throughout the year. Surround these children and all children with role models that encourage decent behavior and healthy choices. May our children flourish in an environment that is safe, that is fun, and is intellectually energizing. We pray, Lord, for the ministries to children and, and students here at Northside. We pray for the backpack ministry, the popsicle giveaway, the picnic and the pumpkin patch. We pray for a, a Christmas event and our Easter egg hunt and any new ministries that you might start here. Thank you, Lord, for the faithful work of our church members and all of our children, young people, and teachers that they would experience your loving presence in the upcoming school year. God, you have placed a sense of eternity in our hearts. We can't fully see all you have done from the beginning to end, but we ask you to help us rise to the great responsibility of being faithful stewards of our children. May they live fully in the bright future you have envisioned for them. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we pray. Amen. Okay. Well, have a great school year, okay? And we will pray for them throughout the year. This shouldn't be the only time that we pray for these young people. So here are the things you can put on your book bag or whatever we got little they're mostly guardian angels there's some crosses in there and then over here are little tags with a scripture and a cross on them okay so you can have one of those too but you can get more than one you can get two or three if, if you want and like i say you put them on your book bag you can put them on a pocket book Okay, quit picking, you can pick later. Here, Hazel, here. Ooh, pretty. Okay, here, buddy, there you go. Right, hurry up, Hazel, there's other people left to pick, baby. There you go. <coughs> One more, that's all, there you go. Yeah, you can get two or three. There's plenty. You can have three, yeah. Okay. You want one? Or two or three? Take however many you want. Yeah, those crosses are pretty cool, too. Got it. Okay. And, uh, Yes, indeed. Thank you, Randy, for that. So, so after worship, if anybody wants to come get some of these things, and, and it might be a reminder for you of the prayers that we've had for these students and teachers this year. But there's plenty up here, and I encourage you to come and uh, help yourself with that. Um, at this time, we'll continue with our worship and ask our 
uh, ushers to come down and let's uh, accept our morning offering, please. God, as we gather to worship today, we have, uh, we have spoken of, of learning, of, uh, of education, and Father, we celebrate the school year to come and all of the students and teachers and staff that, that, we've, that we've spoken of today. Lord, you are our great teacher, and you have taught us that, that you are a generous God, and Lord, we pray that we would learn that lesson and that we, too, would learn to be generous back to you. We bring this offering out of the generosity of our hearts. Let us, Lord, learn to sacrificially give of ourselves in every way to you that the kingdom of Jesus Christ would grow here on earth. We pray you would use this blessing. We bring it in love today. Through Jesus we pray. Amen. Please be seated. Ask for a prayer request this morning. Uh, might kick that off by asking that you uh, please be in prayer for Holda's family in this time. Huh? Okay. Is this one this one on? Yeah. Thank you. Everybody. 
Everybody knows how I like to talk, so <laughs> I can talk about this one. Uh, so talking about that, uh, I lost one of my church mothers this week. Hold on. Uh, so I just wanted to let the family know, uh, I just hope they uh, have the same peace that passes all understanding uh, like when my dad passed away. Uh, that is just a, such a comforting thought to know you can have that. Uh, and Hulda was just such a gracious woman. She loved her church. Uh, and it was just such a privilege to have her in my life and, and to be such a mentor to me and my family. So. I just wanted to say that. Well, we appreciate that, Clay. I know that that, that family's been special to you, and, and really for most, for pretty well everyone at the church, Holder was a special lady, and uh, um, since we've been here for three years now, that she really made us feel welcome, and, and we very much miss her, and I miss the opportunity to go to her house and share a cup of coffee with her, and Cole and uh, just uh, she was she was a wonderful lady and we do miss her and if we ever had anything going on here at Northside you could pretty well count that she would be there unless her health was bad but uh, but anyway we we do miss her but we have confidence Clay as you speak of that first of all she's had a wonderful reunion this past week with people that she loves even though she's left some loved ones behind here she knows she'll see them again and they know that, Clay. They do understand that about this situation. So, so we, uh, we do and will continue to pray for her and uh, for Holda's family and for our church family because we will miss uh, Holda very much. Do we have uh, other prayer requests today? We'd just like to put our granddaughter and uh, two of our great-grandchildren that are traveling home today to safe travels for them as they head home. Your granddaughter and, yeah, and two of our great granddaughters. And great grandchildren. Okay. What were you saying? So Caitlin uh, wanted us to be aware and pray for uh, a past PTA president at her school who lost an 18-year-old son who had a chronic condition since his birth, but he passed away at 18 years old this week. And uh, we pray for healing, and we're also praying our thanks. Hazel took a pretty good fall on uh, Thursday and uh, rode her little bike down the stairs off the front porch uh, and ended up in the emergency room but uh, thank the Lord it wasn't any more you know real bad injury it, she didn't suffer a really bad injury she's got a black eye and you know but uh, we're just thankful that it wasn't worse and and we pray for her healing that uh, that she continues to get well yeah Kevin Oh, okay. So we'll be praying for Bob uh, undergoing a medical procedure on Friday. Okay. Somebody must have worked this church awful hard somewhere. I a lot of back issues here, Kevin. It's got one. Bob's got one. So uh, that's good. All in service to God. So, and we'll pray for you, Kevin, because you're still waiting to hear. I guess when you'll get to get some relief from uh, your situation. So. so you go see them, yeah. Okay. Anyone else? Yes, Jerry's not here. She's not feeling well, so we, uh, she's, uh, 
when you lose one voice from the choir, it's, uh, it's significant. So we want to pray for Jerry. All right. Anyone else? Okay. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Almighty God, we, we come today um, with a little sense of sadness, I would say, as we've had to say goodbye to, uh, to our dear friend, Hulda. And so she is on our mind today, Lord, and her family. And uh, we think of the family as they grieve, but we, along with them, celebrate the fact that Hold it safely in your arms, and uh, she is brightening heaven this morning and always. And we thank you, Lord, for faithful, the faithful people of Northside, of which Holda was one of many. And we pray your blessings on that family. Lord, as we come to worship today, it, uh, it is with one less person to join us. But Lord, we have a sense of rejoicing in our worship because we know that the fellowship of God, the church, the bride of Christ, is eternal. The church has no end. It is composed of all of the saints, those who've come before us, not just at Northside, but the church around the world. Lord, they watch over us. They encourage us. And by their example, Lord, we carry on the work of Jesus, building on the work that they've done before us, even as we build something something new for Jesus and something new for generations to come. Lord, bless our church to be the church indeed of Jesus Christ doing his great work in this immediate neighborhood and having an impact even around the world through the ministries of Northside. Lord, let us feel that presence and let us do whatever we can by your Holy Spirit, by your power, by your, by your urging and guidance and love to, uh, to be a place where people can find Jesus, that people can know that Jesus is easily found here at Northside. Let us find him today and always. Lord, we pray for Lorraine's family, her granddaughter and great-grandchildren. Lord, we pray for this PTA president's family as they grieve the loss of an 18-year-old son. Father, we give thanks for your loving protection and that Hazel is healing and pray that you would completely heal her from her fall. We lift up Bob and pray that his procedure goes, uh, goes well and that he experiences full healing uh, real soon and, and relief from the, the pain in his back that he suffered. Uh, Bless him, Lord, with healing. We pray the same for Kevin, that he would be healed from that discomfort that he's uh, fighting right now. And Lord, we lift up Jerry and pray that you would give her healing and uh, see that she can join us in worship and and in the life of the church soon. Almighty God and Father, we are exploring worship today today as we continue in our sermon series about worship. And Lord, I pray that we would grow in worship, for it is in that worship that we are shaped and formed to be the people of Christ, loving you, giving ourselves to you, expressing our love and care. Lord, be with us as we worship today, as we worship always, and let us grow stronger as the people of Christ, to worship you, Almighty God. 
Father, we bring these prayers in the name of Jesus. And now, Lord, your people, we join, as your people, we join together and pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our next hymn is uh, Holy, Holy, Holy. We'll remain seated as we sing. That's number 64 in your hymnal. Let us pray before we hear God's word. Father, indeed, your word is, uh, is a word of worship, a word of love, a word of grace. It is the living word and the word that transforms us. It gives us new life. As we hear it today, Father, I pray that, uh, that truly it would be the voice of you, our God and Father, that we hear and that... Uh, that we would be um, be changed by the word today lord may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be pleasing and acceptable to you you are our rock and our redeemer amen we're finishing up a series of sermons on worship um this is the fourth uh series fourth sermon on worship we've talked about how David worshiped with all his might. We've talked about 
uh, worship that's greater than ourselves, that's unburdened. And we've talked about how God's Word indeed does equip the saints uh, and how the preaching that we hear, if it's done rightly, and I pray that it is done rightly here, uh, how that Word and the preaching is foundational to our worship. Today we will consider um, where we truly worship. Uh, Jesus teaches us through a story uh, in John of how that worship doesn't end when church is over, that worship for the Christian is in fact an ongoing way of life. And we see that story in John chapter 4, verse 19 through 26. And, and if that seems a little familiar to you, it's because we did read this as our second reading several weeks ago. But I think it's important that we have this, uh, that, I'm, that I'm able to speak about this today and that uh, God has put this passage on my heart. So it's uh, John 4, 19 through 26. This is the woman at the well, the, the Samaritan woman at the well. The woman said to him, Sir, I see that you are a prophet. This is the woman talking to Jesus. Our, ancestor, our ancestors worshipped on this mountain, but you say that the place where people must worship is in Jerusalem. And Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we know, for salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming and is now here when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth, for the Father seeks such as these to worship Him. God is spirit, and those who worship Him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to Him, I know that Messiah is coming, who is called Christ. When he comes, he will proclaim all things to us. Jesus said to her, I am he, the one who is speaking to you. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. I heard this story and thought it was really, uh, really appropriate for our worship today, for our sermon. <clears throat> one Sunday morning, Satan just happened to be standing outside of a large church. Inside the church, people were singing, praying, listening to a sermon. Someone was passing by on the sidewalk and noticed Satan standing on the steps of the church. The passerby asked Satan if it bothered him to hear the people worshiping the Lord. And with a, an evil, demonic laugh, he said, no, it doesn't really bother me that much. They get that way on Sunday, he said, but they'll be all right come Monday morning. It's just a little habit they have acquired. Isn't that true of a lot of us? Worship is supposed to make a difference in who or what we are, and yet oftentimes when we step through the doors, we leave worship behind. In this story from John, as Jesus speaks to this woman, he tells us that there is a proper way of worship and that while we often think of worship as limited to certain places, that worship can be done anywhere. The woman recognizes as we go through the story, the woman recognizes that Jesus is a prophet, even though she's never really met him. She just met him then. But she knows that he's a prophet. She can tell his nature. It reminds us that even if people don't know Jesus, haven't accepted Jesus, they know something about him. They know it through the church. They know it through nature. Scripture says that we know God through so many things. Romans 1.20 says, For his invisible attributes, namely his eternal power and divine nature, have been clearly perceived ever since the creation of the world in the things that have been made, so they are without excuse. The woman had no excuse. 
we have no excuse. Even if we don't truly accept Christ, don't know Christ, God has given us a way to understand that He is out there. And Psalm 19 reminds us even further of how the heavens and earth declare His glory. The heavens, it says, declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of His hands. Signs of God are everywhere. We pray that they see, that people see Jesus through the work of the church. The woman then goes on to speak about how her ancestors worshipped. Sometimes I think people in our culture, sometimes people in what's called a postmodern world, a post Christian world, they want to rest on the laurels of people in their family and what they've done. I've said this before, but I think we can't say it too often. You know, God has no grandchildren, He has children. We all must make the choice. But so many, this woman was more wrapped up in the way her ancestors worshipped. She knew that they worshipped. But there's a question about whether she worshipped herself. She recognized that knowing Jesus that because of Jesus, something was different. And the worship that she had in her mind was maybe something that Jesus was trying to, to overturn, to do it a different way. Jesus was saying in some ways that all will worship in a new way one day. That even the Jews would worship in a new way because of Jesus, because they would receive Jesus and see the world in a whole new light, that his was a new covenant, and that many of the old ways had gone away, that worship would be constant, that worship would be everywhere, Doesn't just, didn't just happen, have to happen in the, in the temple. Ephesians 2 reminds us and teaches us, says, that we are no longer strangers and aliens, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. Those ancestors that she was thinking of, now Jesus says we are all one. That we're built in that oneness upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets with Jesus Christ as our cornerstone. We talked about that not too long ago. And that in Jesus, the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple. So Jesus is saying, Ephesians is teaching us that Jesus has made us all one. And that wherever we are, we are still one and together. And that in him, Ephesians says, we are built together spiritually into a dwelling place for God. Wherever God's people are, wherever God's people are, there is a place of worship. This woman wants to talk about the past, but Jesus warns her that something new is afoot, that things are different. We know that in other pieces of Scripture that when Jesus comes again, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. In other words, all will worship Jesus one day. Jesus maybe is warning this woman that the, there's a day of reckoning coming. I found three instances in Scripture where, where there's this, uh, this uh, reference to every knee bowing and every tongue confessing. It's one's in Isaiah 45. I have sworn by myself the word is gone out of my mouth in righteousness and shall not return that unto me every knee shall bow, every tongue shall swear allegiance. Then in Romans 14, it says, For it is written, as I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me and every tongue shall confess to God. And Philippians 2 also says, So that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow of those who are in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and that every tongue will confess and openly acknowledge Jesus Christ as Lord to the glory of God the Father. Jesus will be worshipped. 
even those that don't recognize that today will one day recognize that he is worthy and that he is to be worshiped. It is our responsibility as the people of Christ, though, to, re to remember that and live that every day, that our knee bows and our tongue speaks of Jesus all throughout our days. In verse 22, there's talk of how the woman's worship, whatever it was, whatever she thought of worship, was of things that could not save her. There are a lot of things that we consider worship. There are a lot of things that people in the culture worship today. A lot of things people in the church worship that aren't Jesus. We receive much from God's Word and the Holy Spirit. And that is where the true worship comes. And Jesus teaches us that in this passage. He teaches the woman, when you think of worship, you need to know, he says, a time is coming when true worshipers will worship in spirit and truth. And that's what God desires, true worship. We have to give thought to what it means to worship. And we have to understand that worship is more than just coming to church on Sunday, even though that's the epicenter of our worship. It is not the totality of our worship. True worshipers, Jesus says. Are you a true worshiper? Are we true worshipers? Even when we come here, are we truly worshiping? Are we carrying so much baggage with us that we can't truly express our love and faith in Christ because we have other things that distract us? Spirit and truth, true worshipers. What is true worship? Jesus says it's worship that's done in spirit and the truth. The truth of God's word as expressed in Scripture, which is God's gift to us, to tell us how the world works, to tell us how He works, to tell us who He is, what His personality is, what He desires in our lives. And it's so different from what the culture would tell us. So true worship is in the truth that comes from God's Word as revealed to us by the Spirit. The truth of God's Word is not something that we allow culture to assign. It is what God has assigned to it. We must just understand it, and God has given us the Spirit to understand it. Worshiping in the Spirit means that with every fiber of our being, with our very souls, with everything about us, we consider God at every turn, that we live, that we breathe and act according to that Spirit's leading and that truth that the Spirit reveals. We love God, we love others, and we do it with all our heart, our souls, and our mind. Worship in the Spirit is not a distracted worship. Worship in the Spirit is when we let worship overtake us and push all of those distractions away. 1 Corinthians 9 tells us about that indwelling Holy Spirit. It says, Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. And 1 Corinthians 3 speaks to it as well. Do you not know that you are God's temple? and that God's Spirit dwells in you. I'm gonna say something that's gonna shock you a little bit because I just heard this this week and I hadn't really thought about it, but you cannot be a Christian. Let me say that again. You cannot be a Christian without the presence of the Holy Spirit. That's in God's Word. God says when you accept Jesus Christ, His Spirit comes into you. That He builds you up as part of that temple that 
Jesus is talking about, that Scripture is talking about. If you don't feel, if you don't seek the Holy Spirit's presence, as difficult as it is to hear, as difficult as it is for me to say, you need to reconsider whether you're truly a Christian or not. You cannot be a Christian without the presence of the Holy Spirit. Romans 8 verse 9 says, are You, however, are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If indeed the Spirit of God dwells in you, anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to Him. How much plainer can God's Word make it? If that's not enough, Acts chapter 2, in Acts chapter 2, Peter says, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of, sin, forgiveness of sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And Romans 8, chapter, verse 11 says, If the Spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, He who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give you life. To your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you the spirit's presence in your life is a gift that comes through faith in jesus christ as much as you might want to know god's presence the only way to really truly know god is to accept jesus christ when you do that the spirit comes the spirit comes in if we're not worshiping in the spirit and in the truth then we're fooling ourselves that we're worshiping at all. Because we have too much from the world that distracts us. Selfish pursuits such as wealth, desires of the flesh in the world, seeking our own way rather than God's way, seeing church mostly as a place rather than the body joined together of Jesus Christ. holding on to things rather than holding on to Christ, rather than seeking His presence. We do all of that. Sometimes we hold on too much to these beautiful buildings, the beautiful things that God has given us at the expense of of following God's commission to love God and love others. We have to recognize that the gifts God has given us of a beautiful sanctuary and church building and a wonderful site are simply tools. They're tools to be used to help people find and experience the community of Christ and the love of Christ and the saving power of Christ. When we worship in truth and spirit, though, it doesn't matter where we worship. Whether it's in a beautiful sanctuary, in a cow pasture, in a parking lot, in a grocery store, or in our homes, because worship becomes the overriding concern of our lives. Worship that is informed by a close relationship with God helps us act in ways that honor God and make us live differently. Worship and connection to God makes us question how we act, how we spend our money, how we spend our time, how we sacrifice ourselves for the benefit of God and others. It affects what we what we watch, what we listen to, what we read. It is acting Worship in the Spirit, living in the Spirit, is removing the corrupt things in our hearts that the world places there, that we draw in there, and replacing them with things that are holy and precious to God. When we accept the Spirit and accept Christ, we begin to value and live the things that please God. In verse 25, the woman said that she knew the Messiah was coming, but she fails to recognize that the Messiah was standing right in front of her. Do you see Jesus right in front of you? Do you feel Jesus 
holding your hand as you do the work in this church? Do you do that work because you want to please Jesus? You don't want to please yourself. You don't want to please your neighbor. All you want to do is the work of God. Do we worship because we see Jesus in front of us? Do we serve lemonade to bring Jesus to someone that's thirsty? Do we fill backpacks because it makes us feel good or because Jesus said, feed the hungry? Are we critical of how we conduct business in church, whether it's in worship or whether it's business of managing the church? Are we, do we hold on too much to what we want rather than saying, what does God want in this moment? We should be faithful and pleased to be in God's presence, to worship Him with every ounce of ourselves, every bit of our energy. In his book entitled Experiencing God in Worship, author George Barna says that the main reason millions of Americans go to church every week is not to worship God but is instead to have a pleasing experience he goes on to say that most Americans go to church to satisfy or please themselves not to honor or please God amazingly few of the people that Barna's research team interviewed said worship is something they do primarily for God Instead, a much larger percentage of those who attend worship services on a regular basis claim they do so for personal benefit and pleasure. This, Barnes says, has got to change, and I would agree with him. This has got to change. We must forget about ourselves and concentrate on the Lord God Almighty. He must be the only focus of our worship. Over the last four weeks, we've explored what it means to worship, what it is, how it changes our lives, what does confession add to worship. So this morning we could ask, how do we worship? Where do we worship? What do we worship? Do we worship with our hearts and souls and minds? I want you to remember You worship God everywhere you go. Worship doesn't end when you walk out that door. We worship the one true God Almighty creator of the universe. We worship the great I am, the God who is one with Jesus and the Holy Spirit, and as such, the God who went to the cross to redeem us, redeem us by his blood poured out, poured out, because of human pride, a human seeking of power and violence. We worship the God whose Son rose from the grave and defeated death for us. And then, as if all that wasn't enough, He came to live within us, to live so close to us that He's inside of us. True worship transforms us. True worship transforms us, but it takes transformed people to truly worship. When we accept Jesus, we are, we are placed in a never-ending spiral. It's a spiral of worship. We accept Christ. Our lives are transformed, and so we worship differently. And then because we worship differently, we worship more truly. And as we worship more truly, more and more we are transformed. You get it. It's a spiral. But if we don't learn to recognize that Spirit's voice inside of us, it's all for nothing. But when we accept the Spirit's voice, when we listen to it, We have worship like none other, and we never want it to end. 
we want to carry it with us. We want to find it everywhere we go and in everything we experience. Preacher Tony Evans said this about where we worship. If you limit worship to this place, the minute you leave the place, that place of worship, you will leave your attitude of worship behind like a crumpled up church bulletin. We are to worship everywhere. Jesus said, you won't, mer- you won't worship on a mountain, you won't just worship in Jerusalem, you will worship everywhere, and you will worship the one true King and God, Jesus Christ. May we learn to do that more and more. May our lives be lives of worship. Amen. Our closing hymn today is number 368, My Hope is Built. Would you please stand? Lord, as we, uh, as we leave the sanctuary today, let it be in a spirit of worship. And let, Lord, as we, as we go every place, from now on, let us be people of worship. Through Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. <clears throat>